I'm way more aware of the money I spend. I don't spend money where I really shouldn't be spending money. COVID really did help me with that too, actually. A lot of people think COVID was a bad thing, but for me, COVID was a great thing because it made me totally reevaluate my whole life as far as my spending and that kind of thing. So it's really, it's really exciting to be able to just slowly build on that as well, like build up that system and create that system for myself. It's going to take a while and like it doesn't happen overnight, right? You got to give it a good seven years before it really comes to the thing. Today, we're discovering the journey of infinite banking entering somebody's life. How does it happen? How does it come about? What's the story? How does this show up for people's lives? And then how does that journey open new doorways and new opportunities for you? We are joined today with Carrie Johnson and my good friend, Ver McCarty, two of the amazing teammates I have at Ascendant Financial. And we are going to have some fun today talking about Carrie's journey on discovering the process of becoming your own banker. So thanks for being with me today, guys. Welcome to Wealth Without Bay Street. Awesome, Rich. Thank you. I'm very happy to be here. Awesome. Yeah. Sorry, well, I'm already talking over people. I did a salute there when you did the introduction, <laughs> just in case, you know, so everybody knows that I'm Vern and Carrie is Carrie, just in case they mix us up. Yeah. And on the audio, that well, does happen. A little, <laughs> a little bit of a funny story, a little segue. For years, apparently my passport says I was a man. So it's a good thing you clarified that, that you were Vern. <laughs> I was Carrie. <laughs> you got to wonder, how does that show up with the border agent when you bring the pa hand the passport? Well, that was the other concern. Many, many trips and nobody ever said anything until like one trip to Mexico. And it's, she was like, do you know your passport says you're a man? And I was like, oh my God, what? No, no. Oh, wow. <laughs> I thought I was going to be stuck in Mexican prison. So... <laughs> Well, I, yeah. I do love what that, that it was discovered, but also that, you know, anyone who's watching our YouTube when they get, this goes live will clearly know that that is not the case. <laughs> no, I didn't know if I should be insulted or, yeah, <laughs> I don't know. Well, we're, we're happy to be here with you, regardless of what your passport says, to talk about this uh, process of becoming your own banker. And so I think it'd be really interesting just to, to kick us off, Carrie, and start with, you know, when do you first remember this showing up in your life? How did it kind of come by? Was it a YouTube something, a radio ad, a, you know, just actively discovering for something that you could do for yourself and your family? So help our listeners understand, when did this process and Nelson's book enter your life? Well, for me, it's none of the above. It was actually, I've been in the beauty industry for 22 years, so I've been doing nails for that long. And I was actually doing Jason's wife's nails from 2016 forward. And every time she'd come for her appointment, she would talk about the business. And so I almost felt like I was going through the, the path with them with, you know, him starting Ascendant Financial and building their dream house. Oh, and I was always getting all kinds of information about it. So I was curious because that's how my brain works. I would ask her questions about what is this IDC? What is it all about? And. And one appointment, she came to me. I had never met Jason before. So all those years that I'd known Rebecca, I'd never met Jason. And, and I just, she was a very non-judgmental person, just like the whole family is, the whole team is. So I just I unloaded on her one appointment. And I just said, you know, I just really, I feel like I need some new direction with my financial situation because it wasn't very good. And single and just kind of plugging along. You know, my occupation sustained me, it paid the bills, and but there was never anything extra to get ahead. So I, she came to me the next appointment. She says, you know, I was talking to Jason about you and he wants to help you. And I said, help me? What do you mean help me? She goes, well, book an appointment with him and he wants to help you. There's no cost to it or anything like that. He just wants to sit down with you and have a discussion. So I booked an appointment with him and I remember sitting in the waiting room to see him and I had the weight of the world on my shoulders and I kept thinking to myself, how is this guy going to help me improve my financial situation without handing me a bucket of money as soon as I walk in his office? Because I'm very naive to the, I was very naive to the financial world. I really, really was. So I sat down at his desk and, you know, and you guys know Jason, he has this energy that is very infectious. And you immediately like him. He's just a very likable human being. So he sat down and we went through, you know, what is your income, what are your expenses, what are your monthly payments? And 
And I told him and he said, okay, so what do you have for life insurance? You know, this is something you never say to Jason. And I'm kind of embarrassed saying it now that I'm actually working in this industry. I said, what do I need life insurance for? I thought he was going to come over the desk. His demeanor changed. <laughs> he got this look on his face like, excuse me? Like the disgusted look. And I, I, again, very naive to even the insurance world. And I said, well, I'll be dead. What difference does it make? <laughs> and here's this like, okay, so you aren't aware that your children will be responsible for your death costs? And I was like, what? So I didn't know that. So there was that. And then we just went through a few things that I didn't know about. Like I was paying an insurance on my credit card. And he said, get rid of that. Then I said, you can get rid of that. I didn't even know you could get rid of it. I was paying my credit card company $130 a month mm. for insurance just on the balance of my card. So that's when he introduced me to life insurance saying, $25 a month, I can give you $150,000 coverage on a term. So so yeah, and he just told me to do a few different things to start. He said, and I just thought, hey, I'm going to trust the process. This isn't going to happen overnight. So I just did all the things he told me to do. And, and then following that, I had another appointment with him and got started on a full life policy and started the full IVC thing. But I really still didn't completely understand how it all worked. And I am guilty of not watching a bunch of videos at that point. This was three years ago as well. So, I mean, there's way more content now, obviously, but I, yeah, I didn't. So, yeah. So in those, in the last two and a half years, my credit score has improved by 200 points just by following what he has said. And, and yeah. And then I just uh, said to Rebecca one day, we were talking about something and she was talking about the business again. And I said, why am I not doing this? And she said, yeah, why aren't you? <laughs> And then, so that's how the next event led to me having another meeting with Jason, casually having a coffee and just talking about getting started with Ascendant Financial and taking the plan is to take the route to become an advisor. So yeah, that's how I started with IBC and that's how I ended up with Ascendant, fin at Ascendant Financial and yeah, it's wonderful. It's a wonderful culture of people and I, I'm always fascinated with the series of events that happen in your life. And if you're aware of it and you're paying attention to it, you will eventually come together with like-minded people. You'll keep making kind of detours until you figure it out. I, I think that's interesting <laughs> because be. Vern, you know, how Vern and I connected and how Vern's journey and, and my own personal journey on, you know, eventually becoming a part of Ascendant Financial as well, I think really ties to the circumstances of events. And I feel like that's probably very common for a lot of the members of our organization. And I also think it's common for people who, as you've described, your, your gateway, your entry point to learning about this process, I would say is not what we're accustomed to. Most people are looking for something like this. They, they end up seeing a YouTube video, they're watching the podcast, or a friend or someone recommends the idea to them, and they go on a journey. Usually they're, you know, you know, tick tacking away at the Googles and they're, you know, trying to find out all the pieces of information that they can. And the end result is they eventually show up where, where they're engaged in conversation with one of our team members to learn more about this process. And so the fact that it was a personal connection and it was a kind of a slow, gradual experience that you had that trust and, and that, uh, that openness and curiosity to connect with Becky early on and, and ask that question. I mean, that really says a lot about the kind of person that you are, Carrie. And and to have you now bringing your smile and your, your, your energy into the team meetings that we have and, and a part of the organization is really quite a blessing, I think. And so, you know, thinking about that journey and, and the discovery of the process and starting really more on the just looking for the, the kind of base level, entry level help around finances to get things sorted out in a certain way to now learning a little bit about insurance, discovering that there's an important need for that to now shifting into, okay, now we've got the whole life started and then boom, changing career path. It's, it's really quite a journey over that time frame, And so I'd love to hear from you maybe in all that experience. And now you're immersed in our, in our culture, in this world, starting to really re recognize and understand the process of IBC. And, and as an example, Nelson Nash, you, you have a, for anyone watching on YouTube's a, 
You have a great poster of the book mm -hmm. and Nelson there behind you, which I think is fantastic. <laughs> and so what what has shown up? What's come up for you now that you're, you know, really ingrained in it and you're seeing both clients and, and our teammates talk about this process and about the impact that Nelson's had in their life, you know, repeatedly on a day to day basis? Well, just you talking about it just gets me exceptionally excited. Like, I'm like Bert. I, I was, first time I saw Bert on video, I was like, I, I'm like Bert. It's like, when I start talking about this with anybody, it's just like, okay, you guys, you really have to check into this. And I know it sounds too good to be true, but it's not. It's it's something that needs to be done. Yeah, what was the question again? See, I... <laughs> the excitement takes hold, right? <laughs> the excitement <laughs> takes hold. So... <laughs> <laughs> you mean, what have I learned more about? Okay, so working, I love the way that the process is as far as working for Ascendant Financial starting to become an advisor is I get to work in the, in the client services area. So I get to learn all the backend stuff. I get to see how everything is, how people are taken care of and the whole process of that and how it starts from, you know, somebody who has no idea about the process to getting excited about implementing this process into their life. And as I said, like I started with the whole life insurance policy, but I actually didn't really start implementing it into my life until probably about six months ago, like really starting to pay attention to it. And now that I'm actually really pay att paying attention to it and transitioning my life to becoming my own banker completely, I'm way more aware of the money I spend. I don't spend money where I really shouldn't be spending money. COVID really did help me with that too, actually. A lot of people think COVID was a bad thing, but for me, COVID was a great thing because it made me totally reevaluate my whole life as far as my spending and that kind of thing. So it's really, it's really exciting to be able to just slowly build on that as well, like build up that system and create that system for myself. It's going to take a while and like, it doesn't happen overnight, right? You know, give it a good seven years before it really comes to the thing. And, and yeah, starting a new career, starting this, at, I mean, I'm turning 53 this year and a lot of people said to me, you're starting a new career at 53. <laughs> I said, yeah, I'm not dead. <laughs> I, <laughs> I want to do something different. And this is something I've done and I've been in a business helping people for years, but this is a different way of helping people. And I'm very good at speaking about something that I love. It's not hard. It's not ever a sales pitch. It's always just a conversation. And I've been told a few times that, oh my God, I don't know what that is, but I just want to do it because <laughs> now you're talking about it. You seem so excited about it. So I don't know if I went off on a tangent with that question, but. <laughs> oh, it's the stream of consciousness. Tangents are good sometimes. <laughs> I told you. <laughs> well, Carrie, I really love, well, obviously you said Jason's energy is infectious. I think your energy is infectious and I love, I love your story. Just That's good. First of all, your story kind of reminds me of the, the, one of my favorite pages, the top of Nelson's book on page 65. I was speaking to somebody yesterday and they're like, oh man, everybody should be doing this. But like, I talk to some people and they go, oh, I'm not really interested or oh, it sounds interesting, but too, you know, the whole too good to be true thing comes up a lot because people think it's some kind of a silver bullet and like tomorrow I'm my own banker and all the money in the world is flowing in and life is good. It's not obviously how it works, but in Nelson's book, he talks about that a commitment and a burning desire to get out of financial prison. You have to have that burning desire. The timing kind of has to be right sometimes for people. They have to be open and perceptive or receptive, receptive to, to the lesson and, and what's possible, right? And you were meeting with Becky all the time and having good conversations. Then eventually you just, for whatever reason, whatever was going on in your life, you felt comfortable or some kind of a need to kind of share, hey, what's, this is what's going on with me. And then she created that connection with Jason. And again, you were, you were open, you were coachable, you took value from the conversation and you learned, you, you did what, you know, the coach suggested that you should do. And. A lot of times we just don't have a, the coach and B, we don't have the desire or we're too insecure or whatever that is, but you weren't. And now you're, you're just starting to scratch the surface in terms of what's possible. You got a whole new career. Mm -hmm. You got a policy going, you're more aware of what's going on with your finances and just with your life in general. And now you're starting to see and connect with teammates and other and clients and, and just that 
that passion is probably just growing and burning inside you day by day. Is that a fair statement? It's a fair statement. Yes. And I understand like you talk to people about it and they're like, oh, well, I don't need to do that. I've got my house paid off or, or I'm going to, you know, I got this money as an inheritance, so I'm going to pay off my debt. And I'm just sitting there going, no, we need to have a discussion. You know what? I need to, I'm not an advisor yet, but the, we have a wonderful team of advisor and advisors. And I really think that you should have a discussion. Don't just, I go, you might as well just take a lighter and burn that money because it's gone, gone. You've paid off a debt, sure you have, but then what? That's, what do you have to show for it, right? So yeah, it builds all the time. And just, I'm just so aware of what other people say now about spending money and, you know, like my son, for example, I'm going to use my son as an example. He has collected Funko Pops. I don't know if you guys know what those are. I am familiar. They, they <laughs> actually like, have a... Yeah, they look like bobbleheads. They head. have a big Galgo headquarters in Washington, which is about two hours from me. Oh. And I, I've been meaning to go there and check it out. Apparently, it's a neat, it's a neat building. With like, there's like a, like a giant Funko, like, <laughs> like coming out of the building or something. <laughs> well, my son would love that. And he's 24, but he loves that kind of stuff. But what he is always looking for is something to invest in to build a value and then turn around and sell it, right? So he had said to me last week, he said, you know, I've, I think I'm going to sell my Funko Pops. I probably have about 20 grand worth because I'd like to, you know, pay off some debt. And I'm like, oh, time out. Yep, you can sell those Funko Pops. But the next step after that is you're going to, we're going to take care of that. We're going to get somebody to sit with you and do something with that money. Well, I need to pay off my debt. It's not, I'm like, no, you can. It's, that's why, Richard, that one day I asked you if you had a spreadsheet to find out how much would be available for a policy loan, depending on how much you put in to begin with. That's what that was about. So, yeah. So it's just, yeah, I'm, it's like I'm consumed with it, obviously. Like, it's crazy. That awareness, though, that you talked about, Carrie, earlier about the, you know, what's going on. Some people become aware of something, but then there's the, the, the action that has to follow it, right? And once you become aware of what's possible by implementing the process of becoming your own banker, if you don't take the action, you got to take responsibility for it. It's, Sarblo often says, People say, oh, I wish I would have heard about this 10 years ago. He goes, well, let's not have this conversation in 10 years from now. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I was just going to say, because my son's like, seven years, give it seven years. I go, yeah, but it's seven years from now. Do you want to be wishing you would have done this seven years ago? Like, that's not the attitude to have. Time's going to go by anyway. Just because you haven't started it yet doesn't mean you can't start it today. My mom is 70 and she is going to apply for her. First Love it. Life. That's awesome. fantastic. You, you know, you're, you're never too old to do things. And, you know, sometimes we, we do hear that we hear those kind of statements, you know, there's, there's that old cliche that you can't teach an old dog new tricks. And I, I just don't believe that. And I think where that comes up is people, unfortunately, they, they let the world guide them on how to make decisions in their life versus standing up and saying, look, this is how I want to make decisions in my life. And I'm ready, willing, and open to continue learning and, and growing and developing. And, you know, from time to time, we do see people, we bump into people who are like that. But often something as simple as Nelson's book, actually getting their hands on it, going through that information can be enough of an inspiration for them to make that shift and make that change. And, you know, you, you identified, you know, Carrie, that you're that you're still very, very young. And in fact, you're younger than Nelson was when he first discovered this concept because he was in his he was in his mid to late fifties when he really started to recognize what was going on. He'd already had policies and whole life leading up to that point, but he just wasn't doing it in the way that he teaches us and instructs in the book because he didn't have that epiphany, that moment of financial strife where the world was crashing down around him and interest rates spiking and owing a huge amount of money on real estate deals because, you know, every, and also when you used to say that, Everyone says that that leverage is wonderful, but no one tells you what happens when the lever goes the other way. And that's really what happened for him. And so, and then he, right. you know, he, their house got robbed. Someone stole all their silver. They had a, you know, one of their grandchildren was born and they, they were born with cancer. They didn't believe that the baby would, would survive. Thankfully, she's still alive today and part of the family and now has children of her own. And so all of these circumstances of events, his brother died. And all of this happened in about an 18 month period of time. It was, you know, for a lot of people, it can be a very, you know, crushing circumstance. 
And, and for Nelson, you know, you, you better believe if you actually talked to him when he was still here, he would tell you that it was a, it was a painful experience, but it's through those experiences, you know, there's a, you know, what, what people sometimes don't recognize is that diamonds are formed by intense pressure. Okay. And that's where our best ideas and gems and inspiration comes from, because when we have problems in our life that we need to tackle, our brain is very creative. And Nelson says this is about imagination. Your brain starts to figure out how to solve these problems. And it's looking for different ways to get it done. It's, it wants to fix things for you so that you can have a you know, joy back in your life, et cetera. And it's really through that, that circumstance that led Nelson to realize, I know how to solve this. I have to fundamentally change how money is flowing through my life reevaluate my priorities, you know, like you identified COVID actually was a benefit for you because it helped, you know, highlight some of those things because your mindset was now shifting to a period where you could see new opportunities of how money could move through your life a little differently. And the same thing happened for Nelson and that allowed him to increase the premiums he was paying, increase the capital base, and get rid of the snakes and dragons, the, the the bankers in his life. And although it took him 13 years to fire his bankers, the time was going to go by anyway, as you said, Vern. And so at the end of that, he, him and his wife, Mary, they did not see a bank for other than for, you know, a convenience of a debit card and online banking transactions. But for financing needs, for accessing capital, they did not see a bank for 30 years before Nelson passed away. Now, that is a peaceful, stress-free way of life. Yeah, that's, uh, that's so powerful, Rich. The, there's so many good things that you're both saying right now about, first of all, I'm hearing like focusing on what you can control. You probably both have heard me say that a lot. That's just the stuff that I say to myself to get me when I'm in the, when I'm in the gap in life, when I'm focusing on when things are not going really well, I go, wait a minute, like, what am I focusing on? Well, when things aren't going really well, I'm focused on everything I can't control, everything outside of me. Right. And I go, okay, what action can I take? That's the first thing. And then Rich, you, you, you talked about the, the, the uh, diamond being created from intense pressure. One of a mentor of mine also said that, what is it, a kiln, you know, to make a really nice wine glass, it has to go through the kiln, right? So sometimes when you're in the, you're in the stuff, you feel like, man, the world's crumbling around me. It can't get any worse. Why is this happening to me? Yada, yada, yada. But then you look back, at least this is what it's been, you know, like in my life, everybody that I talk to who, you know, 20 and 20 and older, even younger, sometimes everybody's been through something or multiple things. And then when you look back at those experiences, it's like, mm, would I want to go through that again? Yeah, probably not. But I'm actually extremely grateful that I did go through that thing because it made it put me in a position to deal with this situation or take advantage of this opportunity, the changing of the mindset and then all those benefits that come, come away from those experiences, but you don't necessarily know at that time what it's going to create, but it's all about just moving forward and, and continuing to take action and then learning and, and changing the actions from, from after you learn, just like Nelson did when he saw that things were going really well in life and then things went upside down seemingly overnight, but then it came out the other side. Couldn't even describe what was possible in terms of what he created today and, and the impact that the ripple effect of those experiences that came from Nelson's life. When I share this story with people on calls and I tell them, they go, how come more people don't know about this? And you know, that kind of a thing, right? I go, Hey, you're at the tail end of like a 40 year journey here. Like this is one guy, you know, who was born 90 years ago, yeah. who went through his life and had these experiences. That's just one cog in the wheel, a huge, huge part of it. Right. But like 40 years later, we're now having this conversation because of the personal, you know, trials and tribulations, personal financial ruin, and, and then the transformation that came from it in mid early, mid 1980s. And now we're here having this conversation. I'm fascinated by those kinds of stories. And so that kind of stuff, reflecting on that sometimes is what pulls me out of the darkness because, hey, I'm a human being. Not every day is sunshine and rainbows, okay? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> well, and without the stuff, we don't gain perspective. Yeah, absolutely. So if you get stuck in the stuff instead of learning from it, you know, it'll be a different Completely different outcome. Yeah. Now, speaking of Carrie, I'm curious, Carrie, is your past career, you know, you are obviously involved with people, you're engaging with them and you're helping them to, mm -hmm. you know, in the, in the nail industry, you know, feel wonderful about themselves and that sort of thing. Now, transitioning to being a part of the Ascent team and, 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 and being immersed in this kind of a culture, you still get to do that, but it's a bit of a different, it's, it's a, through a different mechanism, through a different way. 
but I would imagine that there's some similarities into how the, the feeling that's created within you about how you're able to help and serve. And so maybe can you speak to that for our listeners and when you, when you just, you know, give them a taste of what it's like to be a part of, of an organization and just be around and be, be connected to people that you're helping, whether it's through the application process or through other team members on our team that are, that, you know, you're, you're helping provide assistance to as you learn and, and go through the ropes of understanding what it's going to be like as you move forward and up in time towards an advisory role. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I went from, I always used to say I hold women's hands to make them feel better. And now I've transitioned into a business where it's just, yeah, from start to finish, it's, it's almost, you're almost turned into a cheerleader, I guess. Like you, you're so happy for somebody when something comes back to, they've been approved and you just can't wait to let them know that their policy has been approved because now it's like, now you can begin this process, which you've been you know, leading up to however long it's been, you've been discussing it with your advisor and it's just yeah, I've, I've just always been somebody who just really likes to help people. I love the feeling of helping people. I never expect anything in return. I don't need that. It's just the helping part that fulfills me. And this, I'm just really excited about all the people that I'm going to be able to help with this. And I talk about it. I still do nails on the side. So every client, whether they like it or not, gets to hear about it. So... <laughs> There may be some people coming to send in financial before I get to the advisor role, which is fine. I don't care. If the sooner these people get started, even my mom, she said to me, well, I'll wait till you become an advisor. I said, you're not waiting till I become an advisor. Like that could be another year from now or so. I don't know. So no, we'll just get you going. It's just, I don't know. It just feels good. I just. Carrie, this I is what I did. Richard, I, I want to talk about, because uh, what Carrie's pointing to here is you often bring up the unseen. We always talking to our clients about the unseen. Carrie kept bringing up the number just out of the blue, you know, the number seven, seven years, right? So people hear that and they automatically uh, tie some meaning to that. Oh, well, seven years, I'm going to have to sit here like a lump for seven years and wait for something to happen. It doesn't work that way. Look how excited Carrie is. Look how aware of her spending she is. Look at the conversations he's having with people. I have clients right now that I met with last week. When I first met them two and a half years ago, they had a $200,000 mortgage. They started to capitalize their policies. We restructured their mortgage a little bit. They're now completely 100% mortgage free. No credit cards, no car payments, no lines of credit. Oh, so All of their great. policy loans have been paid back and now they're ready to take the next step to actually start putting some money to work to create more cash flow and to build more policies. So what you talk about, Rich, is the unseen. Can I put what I just described and what Carrie's talking about, can I put that on an illustration? Can I show somebody a number that makes them think and feel the way that Carrie's feeling today? Can I show somebody an illustration that will produce the result that my client just created? The, the breakfast I had with my client this morning, who's in her mid sixties and who's super excited and gets this message. And I was delivering her third policy and she's ready to like start more and they're restructuring things and they're shifting where the money's flowing. We're starting the process. The momentum really starts to maybe kick in year seven, year eight, year 10. And as Richard said, and as I said, the time's going to go by anyway, but all of what's possible, everything's just building and getting better up to year seven and beyond. We can start implementing the process right away mm -hmm. and shift in your mind and think about the ripple effect. Forget about the values of the policy, the ripple effect of uh, in, uh, in the human being, who you're actually going to be in seven years. You, you can't put that on an illustration, right? Yeah. No. It's so powerful. Absolutely not. And I know people get overwhelmed because a lot of people have a lot of debt. So they get overwhelmed and they think, I don't even know where to start. But there's that saying, well, how do you eat a whole bear? One piece at a time. because. Whether or not you address it a little bit at a time, it's still going to be there if you don't. Mm. So for me, I I was excited. I took a I took my first policy loan a couple months ago and paid off my nineteen percent interest credit card. Nice. Okay, so now I'm paying back. I use the insurance company's money to pay off my credit card. Woo! So now I'm just paying it back at six point two percent and just giving them the money back instead of putting it on the credit. And now you co-own the lender. You didn't really change anything, did you? you? You you capitalized the policy. You were servicing the credit card. You accessed the policy loan, which is the insurance company's money, without interrupting the growth in your policy. You pay off the credit card, and now you just redirected the payment 
that you were already giving to someone else. The money was already flowing. It was just flowing in the wrong direction. Like Nelson said, we we're pumping money into the system in the wrong direction. Mm -hmm. You just turned around and started pumping the money into the system in a direction that actually benefits you and creates that tailwind. Didn't really change much, right? Just the process. No. The only thing that it changed is the money that the payment I give back to the, the loan is immediately available to me again. And yes, when you pay off your credit card, that money is av immediately available to you again. But you use that money in your credit card this way. I'm, yeah, and I could just use it somewhere else. So baby steps. Well, one step at a time. And yeah, uh, as you said, one bite at a time. That's how we, that's how people learn this process. And that's also how they implement it. And so part of that learning journey is listening to podcast episodes like this, where we interview amazing people like, like Carrie, who are on the process. They're in the journey at different phases. We have people that we've interviewed that have been doing it for, for five, six, seven years. We have people that are just getting started that are fairly new at this, like yourself. And then, you know, you may be watching this and wondering how do I get started or what is the next step for me? Well, the next step is actually pretty simple. In fact, there's seven of them. You just go to sevensteps.ca and you can download that thing right there. And I'll walk you through the seven steps you need to take to figure it all out. It's pretty simple. And it's it's not a difficult learning journey. It's all mapped out for you. Yes, you got to invest some time. But if you don't invest the time, you won't know what to do. You won't be engaged in the process. This is not a financial product that you just go and buy off the shelf and then you set it and forget it. This is an interaction about your financial life. It is a way of doing things. It is a lifestyle. And so what we're doing is we're trying to implement the mindset that allows you to be successful in that lifestyle for as long as possible and as many generations as possible. Nelson said that you need to learn how to think long range. And what he really meant is learn how to think 70 years beyond, learn how to think multiple generations down the road. That's difficult to do. And it is not common. It is uncommon to try to think in terms of generations. But when you can stretch your imagination that way and you can start to think, what do I want to see happen? What would life be like if I did A, B, and C and I could impact my children, my grandchildren, and my great-grandchildren who I may not even meet, ever meet? But that thinking starts to change the way that we interact with our money today and the decisions that we make and how much more impact they can have as we move along the journey. So I'm inspired. I'm excited. Carrie, I'm so grateful to have you as part of the team for you to be here on the show and share your journey. I think we'll be checking in on your journey at uh, various points along the way and have you back on the program. <laughs> Vern, as always, joining me today, standing in for Jason as co-host. I appreciate you and for everything that you do and sharing your wisdom and your mindset as you grow and develop with this process as well. And for our listeners tuning in, Thanks for being a part of the program today. Make sure you keep looking out for the next video that's going to pop out because there's a lot more good stuff to learn and keep your journey ongoing because learning never stops. Thanks again for being with us today, everyone.